Hello Yuki fans, Wadarant here, and welcome to a deck profile with Profile Power Draco Slayer. I have chosen to play Profile Power Draco Slayer over the Performage Engine Pals because I think the Performage, the Performage Engine itself can clog quite a lot, and it's just it just all too many plays and I don't enjoy that. Whereas this is a lot more free, I have a lot more usage of the Performer Pal Engine and the Draco Slayer Engine, so I don't have as many consistency issues with, like, say, I have Luster and a Master in hand. I cannot pop in Performer Pals, I probably won't be able to pop my um, Master, but in this build, I will be able to, and be able to sell this sort of thing, hopefully. Plus, I am able to abuse cards like Unexpected Die and uh, Rescue Rabbit in this deck, so that's very fun indeed. It goes for quite a lot of rank 4 plays, but when um, Hope Harbinger comes out in the TCG, hopefully it'll be February, maybe in the goal set, or maybe a bit after, we'll be able to evolve this deck into a rank 8 spam deck, which would be very enjoyable. So yeah, I thought I'd bring you a deck profile since I've more or less completed it. I I'm trying to figure out where to put some MSTs into the main deck and um, a third solemn sort of notice when I get it. But more or less, this is consistent enough and I enjoy it a lot. So I'll go into the main deck first and then then extra and then side. Side is still getting modified at the moment. I'm sorry if there's any glare on this. I no, I don't have to mess lighting for these. So we have three Skull Crowbat Joker. Joker is our searcher, as everyone knows, he can search out our four pals, and that's basically it. We have loads of searches for this deck. We have three monkey ball, which does the exact same thing, just in the scales. So that is that, basically. I don't usually pendulum summon him. I can pendulum summon him, because I do run an eccentric Archfiend, but most of the time he's just going to be dead in my, in my um, extra deck. Then we have three sorcerer finally completed. I love these guys. The sorcerers can destroy cards on the on my side of the field, and add four piles up to two for how many monsters I have being destroyed. So most likely I destroy my monkey board and my scale to either get another monkey board, a joker, depending if my opponent runs ghost go go or Baylor, and I will also. I also have the option to go for Lizard Draw to hopefully set up a combo with Key Turtle if I had to search Key Turtle with Monkey Board. So hopefully get two draws, even if I don't get my scale back, which I do sometimes get my scale back. I think 50% of the time because I have so many, so many searches, I do usually get it back. But if I don't, I should have got a decent board by that time. So that's the only times I would go for that. Then we have two Gi Turtle. Most play, people play one Gi Turtle for Perform Pile Draco Slayer. I always advise two Gi Turtles since you kind of use the Sorcerer a little bit more effectively. You want you just want that extra consistency to just increase the draw, increase the draws. I usually I do do sometimes have to kill Gi Turtle. I think there's only like once or twice, but most times my opponent will kill a Gi Turtle. And I will have another Gita in the deck if I only play one. And I like Gita Turtle's effect so much. Plus, opening up with Gita Turtle and Monkey Board or Gita Turtle and Joker is very, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable indeed. Then we have two Lizard Drop to complement the Gita Turtle and give us an extra draw or combo and give us two draws. Which is fun. Very fun indeed. Plus, you can pen them something out and destroy him with Sorcerer so you get to search through that way as well. Or he, gets, or he has a nice alternative effect when he's on the field and most likely be in defense mode. If a another face of pendulum, another face of monster you control is destroyed um, by your opponent's attack or card effect, you can draw equal to the amount of four power monsters you control. I think it's monsters, yeah, four power monsters you control. So you get an extra draw if the opponent doesn't go for this draw automatically. Which they most likely will, but if they feel like they, is, they only got like one attack and they can even destroy this or, or something else that might be more dangerous, they probably go for that. So extra draw, nice defense. You always go into a pseudo wall if you're in a bad situation. So this draw can help with that. Now onto the Draco Slayer engine, we play free Luster Pendulum. Luster Pendulum destroys our, our other scale to search out another copy. Setting up our rank 4 plays. Very good. He's a tuner, so he goes for Ignista prominence. He can also be used for the fusion of Dynaster and the Exceed of Magister, but that's about it. 
You can't do, it, do anything else with him except from making a wall. Then we play free vector pendulum. I chose vector at three and, and my master at two because vector is more needed for the Draco face off. If I use many, if I use only two of him and I already gone into masters, I may be liable for something out vector, unfortunately. So I don't want to kill the dead um, Draco face offs in my deck, so I'd rather have them all live than having less than live. So three vectors is better for me. Very, very much better for my sky, uh, for my playstyle. It's also very dangerous against magicians because it negates their pendulum effect. Pendulum effect. So that's quite nice as well. Then we have two master pendulums to finish off the Draco Slayer monster engine. Master pendulum is usually brought out through unexpected die or rescue rabbit or my Ignista. And goes for a nice uh, rank four plays. If it go, if I've gone for this, I probably have two other monsters on the field. So master could be summoned out and then go for infinity, which is very good complementary summon. So yeah, plus he can um, if you're unexpected die him and then summon that Joker. You can go for dinosaur first and then go for a pendulum summon. So you get extra plus from it, very much. So, and then finally for the final pendulum monsters, we have one eccentric arch fiend. Centric Archfiend is always good as a utility card. It can be MST or Exile Force. I do side do side her out a decent amount of time against faster players. But in the long run, she's great for turn one and you can always uh, recycle her very effectively in this deck. So that's the pendulums to over and done with. Then we go on to the one of Rescue Rabbits, since it's one of in the TCG. Which is annoying, but hopefully we don't actually get at more than one because then this deck becomes even more rampant. But at one is very nice. It usually sums out either two uh, masters or two vectors, depending on how many have gone out in the deck. Most likely I would go for master over vector, just so I have more plus, and probably go for a future zone afterwards. So that's very nice. Vector is also doesn't need to be a um, normal summon to gain that effect. It can be special summon from the hand. You can't special summon from the deck, but you can special summon from the hand. And yeah, it doesn't waste your normal summon like, like it used to do before pendulums. Then we play free max C. This may be dropped down to two to incorporate M another M to incorporate MMST, or maybe down to one and just put two in the side deck. Not one hundred percent sure yet, but. At three, it does seem to be nice. It always slows down your opponent because they either have to do the maxi maxi challenge or they have to uh, just basically leave with an, with an inadequate board so I can set up next turn. So it's very nice in that sense. I do enjoy maxi a lot, but with monarchs coming out next well this week, XC may lose its favour, and yeah, that's not going to be good for that. And the final hand traps are two Veilers, because I'm too poor for, for a Ghost Ogre. Although, I probably only run one Ghost Ogre, maybe maybe two Ghost Ogres instead of Maxis. I'm not 100% sure, but... Vec Veiler is an amazing card, it can negate their effects. Very good against Monarchs, because you're going to negate the idea until they get... Um, Super Pontums, and then they become Super Pontum Monarchs, it's a more consistent version. But um, Veiler can negate all those nice monster effects like Ptolemyus or Joker, if they if you think they're bluffing about their scale with Monkey Board. So yeah, that's the end of the monster lineup, I believe. Well, actually I can't remember how many monsters there is. Um, 2, 3, 6, 9, 10... 11, 12... 15, 18, 18, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. I think there's about 27 monsters there, so that's the highest monster count I've ever played in a deck, but it is kind of needed with it being pendulums. There, so we're going to the spell cards. Free Draco Face Off, because Draco Face Off is a great part of the engine. It sets up your instant um, dynasty play, because if you have Joker in hand with this, you're most likely to go for that dinosaur, or you can go for Evil Swarm Nightmare because you can easily summon out a um, vector pendulum if they don't call a tracker slayer. So that's very nice. Plus, it can set up your scale if you're in a bad position. And the fact that it's a quick play stops OTKs, 
because you don't have damage juggling in this deck, but you can set it as a back row, and say if your opponent's playing Mermail, you can summon out a nice um, Pendulum Wall, so to speak, or you can change to like Wavering Eyes if you're going to make it even worse for your opponent, although I don't, I've never done that play yet. Then, three Waving Eyes. I always suggest to side this out because this is too dangerous. It's just not skillful in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! and should never have been created. The first two effects are very nice for consistency. Well, 500 damage, how's that going to help consistency? But the second effect I do use for my consistency in the deck. It can help if I do Brick. But the third and fourth effect are just too overpowered. And... I always suggest to side out so we don't have to play with this. I probably I usually side in either Twin Twisters or MSTs if I'm gonna side that. So yeah. Next is two instant fusion. I'm tempted to bump this up to three just to abuse Northern that much more. But I I would be tempted to put a third Northern in my extra deck and I probably I probably wouldn't, but uh, there'll be a possibility I could dead draw it, so I think two instant fusion is decent enough. I do open up with it sometimes, and it can just make an infinity revelation play very easily, very easy indeed. I have used, I have resolved two in one duel at times, so I do like to have two bonds in my deck. Then we have, finally for the spells, two unexpected die. Originally I was planning on doing three of this. But I cut it down slightly just because I've got instant fusion access in this deck. When instant fusion dies, like it could do it on the next ban list, unexpected die would probably be boosted up to three, just to increase the consistency of level four and play the wrong four plays. Unexpected die can special summon a level four or lower normal monster if you control no monsters. So great to open up with. Not the best in later on in the duel, but you never know what you could draw. Now onto the final bits that are trap lineup one treacherous trap hole. Originally this was time space trap hole because I didn't really like treacherous, but I'm testing it out. It's technically just to make my Mermo matchup a little bit more easier, especially with um, them summoning up Mermo Abyss Atlant Neptubis Atlantean, and then you using treacherous trap hole, uh, treacherous trap hole, to destroy your own monster and that. Neptubis before it can get off and hopefully shut down your opponent's engine, which is the hope for this deck. Although it can be, become dead if I use another trap card. Then we have one solemn warning and two solemn notice. Well, solemn strike, I should say. Solemn warning, you know what that does, negate summon. And solemn strike does the same, but for inherent and monster effects. I like to have try the trap lineup at least. I don't like to have no traps at all because I feel a little bit a little bit defenseless as a duelist if I don't have any traps at all. Unless it's a really strong OTK deck. And even then I still have one or two traps. So yeah, it's a 42 card deck because I can't figure out what I could cut down for the other two cards to make it 40. But it works at 42 decently well. We have enough viability. And yeah. Let's go on to the extra deck. We have, I'll put you back into the place, Traptrix Rapalasia. Traptrix Rapalasia, as we know, is our nice trap hole searcher. Well, searcher, Miller, I should say. And very dangerous to set up with turn one. So I love to have, bring her out turn one, unless I've got Infinity Play. Then I've got Evil Swarm Nightmare. Say I draw it into my trap hole. I would probably go for Nightmare as an alternative play if I don't have Infinity. And also Nightmare is very dangerous against um, around 4 decks or Synchro decks because you can set their tuners if they go Special Summon out things and they go to Synchro on one, turn 1 or if they go for something like Ignister or Castell you can set that before they can use their effect. So that's very dangerous. Then 2 Northern, yeah they, it, it's not like Synchro Exceed all bunched together. This is all, all over the place I should say. To Northern, because I have resolved into fusion twice, and I would like to have that guarantee that my other instant fusion isn't dead in the deck. Then one Dynaster to protect our scales, go for it turn one if I have um, Joker and Draco face off, if I'm lucky, then that would be very nice. And I can also reborn my Master Pendulum from the graveyard if I've been used for an Exceed Summon, or for like, not for Aflasia, for Infinity, so that gives me a nice 
board. I think the best board I can really make is Danister, Master Pendulum, Infinity, Rafflesia, Solemn Strike, and a Trap Hall, which is very, very nice. And yeah, that's, it's, it's a very good card. I wish this was Ultra Rare instead. It would have looked better in Ultra Rare. Or Ultimate Rares. Ultimate Rare version of this would be amazing. Two Ignista Prominence, because I do go into Ignista twice in one duel. Twice in one turn, possibly, if I've got the right setup. Ignista doesn't target for its for its um, shuffle back effect, and special summons out to your Dracus Slayers for your rank 4 plays, or for your Flame Destruction if your opponent is in Pendulum. So that is amazing. I love Ignista, and in Ultimate Rare, it looks pretty good. Then we have Magister Paladin. This is why I want Ultimate, because then I'd have all my Dracoslayer rare, Dracoslayer extra deck monsters as Ultimate Rares. So that would be lovely. But unfortunately, Dancer never got that choice. So Magister Paladin helps if I have I've bricked more or less, but I can go for a rank 4 play. I can search out Joker, Monkey Board, or Sorcerer, depending on what I need at the time. And it can switch some of that uh, Dracus Slayers from my extra deck. This can summon out from my deck, and this summons from my hand or graveyard. So that's all covered. Then we have the Infinity Engine, Ptolemyus, Nova, and Infinity. Ptolemyus is should be banned, hopefully, and then we would have to not be able to run this ver version. But I love Infinity as well. To be honest, I've grown to love him. Because I'd love to bring him out and then see see if my opponent can actually get over him. If they can, that's very good on them. If they can't, it's a shame. But Infinity is what we need to use for this format. Then, on to our final rank fours. King of the Feralins to search out Lizard Draw. Castell to uh, shovel back things. Diamond Dyer to pop things. And Abyss Dweller for Burning Abyss and the Clowns. Which is very, very good. Not for Infernoid. Should nev never use it against Infernoid. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the extra deck, essentially. I do love my extra deck. I do sometimes want to have Constellar for ladies in this deck with um, Diamond just to increase my Infernoid matchup, but I don't think I have the room for it at the moment. If Infinity dies, then we won't be able to actually have the chance for it unless we run Delta Ross. <laughs> and I don't think we're going to. So the side, so the side deck for this is um, not one hundred percent. It's more or less work. It's working. It's in a working order, but um, it still needs to fit in my free Well, two to three mask of restricts because we're entering the monarch format. So we do need to run those, but um, I haven't decided what I'm going to take out and possibly. Possibly a Twin Twister or something. So we have Chimeratic Fortress Dragon and two Cyber Dragon Cores for our Cosmo matchup. Most likely they'll go for Infinity or they'll go for the standard Dark Destroyer. You can summon out Core, shuffle, uh, fuse them into your Dragon, which is very nice. I am tempted to run a second Fortress Dragon since I have two Cores, but I just don't have the room for it. If I do summon Core and they Tag out into Dark Destroyer or Destroy Core, I can special summon out another core from the deck if I have no monsters. So that's very, very nice. Very good search in that sense. I did originally have a Drain here too to access rank 4 plays, but um, I just stopped the room. Then we play to Denko Seka. Denko Seka is good for, say, if you're going against an Ariadne build of Draco Slayer, or Ariadne build of Pepe, I should say. You can stop all of their face downs unless they got solemn warning which you obviously won't give them if you have denko seka it's also very good for um going second in pepe matches because they more likely have some back row that could piss you off and denko can really screw that over so yeah it's also good for rogue decks too because there's a lot of those then we have one side blocker. Just, I haven't used this card before. I've tried to side it in, but I haven't had, never drawn it. In theory, it shuts down your opponent by calling out one of their good cards, like Monkey Board or Neptabyss or Megalo, depending on what they're playing. So in theory, it does work, and it's rank four. It's a level four for our rank four plays, but I still haven't used it at the moment. One Gradle Eagle, which I may switch for um, something else. It's mainly to it's mainly for my Mermail matchup, just to give them something that they don't expect. 
I did see a tech um, on Olympia's channel uh, recently, very recently, um, I think it was up this morning, um, of Ariadne, Ariad, Ariadne the Melodious Diva, which could be down my street because I do like Melo Melodious, but um, right now, great legal for, great legal for now. It may be moved for Master Strict, to be honest. But if he isn't, I probably may switch him for Aria to have that extra randomness against Mermails. Would be awesome. So yeah, snatch deal. Very good. And it's good against Rogex. Then we have two Kaijus. I want to run a third Kaiju by the start of the room. Uh, Kaijus are lovely. I've always been happy with my Kaijus as side deck options. And with Infinity, Rafflesia, Vanity's Fiend, um, uh, not Magic's Fiend, how does that help, how does that help against Magic's Fiend? Uh, Magic's Fiend and um, what else, Naturia Beast, they're all rampant, so this card can really screw them over. Not Magic's Fiend, obviously, unless I tribute summon it, and then I'd have to summon it in defense mode because he can't run over it, which is a shame. Then we have Triple Twin Twister, I'm thinking maybe switching these to MSTs, just because I usually dead draw them without a cat hand, if I draw them in the, in the early stage of the duel. If I draw them in the later stage, then I usually have a hand discard. But essentially, Twin Twister is very dangerous, pop two, this MST times two just with wrong cost, which is very, very nice, plus the artwork is supremely nice, I mean the magical hat there just... Oh god, that is so beautiful. But um, Twin Twister is very good. It may be moved for MST so. Then one time space for when my tra my treacherous is going to be useless, most likely my respective matchup, so I can put time space in as an alternative. And then two Imperial Iron Walls for my Inferno matchups, just because they are annoying. Plus, it would be good against. Um, Monarchs as well because they banish for their pantheism and their I believe Erebus uh, uses this banishment effect and um, Original Monarch, Caius and Mega Monarch can't screw this over so this can be a pseudo side for them but I do need to move in the mascot restrict obviously. So yeah that's essentially that. I hope you enjoyed this um, deck profile. I do love my deck very much. Even if I don't have Draco Face, if I have Draco Face will fall on top. But essentially, I love this deck. It's very enjoyable for me to play. And yeah, I hope you hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So please like, subscribe if you enjoy this and want to see further content. Also share. Um, please leave your comments below. You got your suggestions for the deck. Also suggestions for my channel in general. If there's any decks you want me to play in play more of, please let me know. I will do more of those videos, obviously. And yeah, thank you for watching. Madaran signing out.